Hello and welcome to Michael Pepper Tech. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about why I returned the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. First of all, let's get into some of the positives. It's a very snappy device. Battery life was great. I love the beautiful 3K OLED display that it had on there. And, you know, charging through USB-C and the keyboard was wonderful experience to use the keyboard and the trackpad and the speakers were decent. They're a little bit tinny compared to something like a MacBook Pro or even like the Asus ZenBook 14X OLED that my wife has. Um, the vocals are pretty good, but not much bass. So if you're listening to music or watching movies and there's some bass in there, you really won't hear that very well, but it's got a headphone jack, plenty of ports. The problem I had really was software and some of it's been fixed since then, but it was kind of one of those like too to little too late scenarios. I used it for a few days, you know, long enough to determine battery life and to kind of get a handle on how the hardware works and the processing and stuff. And, you know, if you're just watching YouTube videos and maybe sending some messages on, on, you know, Twitter or or threads or Facebook Messenger and just doing basic web browsing stuff. It's a beautiful, wonderful product, but you could do that on a much less expensive product. You could pick up an Asus for half the price. I mean, the Asus ZenBook 14X OLED that my wife got it, we got it for $6.99. And you'd still have the beautiful OLED display. You'd still have a great keyboard and better speakers and all the ports you need and battery life is fairly decent. Now the Galaxy Book 4 Agile, they tell you that battery life on that was looking to not be near what they say, but maybe about half that. So you could get yourself probably through a full work day. But if you start getting into photo editing and video editing, compatibility with some of the applications, I was trying to use CapCut and it kept crashing. Of course, they update, updated that like about a week after I returned mine. Um, Adobe, their suite sort of works. Some of it's optimized for it, but some of the stuff is still running on the translation layer that they use. Um, you know, I use LumaFusion, uh, in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve, the beta is working for it, but it still has some kinks to work out. And that's kind of what I discovered when I was using it. For me, it comes down to, I needed something that I could edit my YouTube videos on. And if an iPad with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, and I can just plug in an external drive, can outperform it for the photo and video editing for the basic stuff that I do, and has the compatibility with the apps that I need, then that's what I ended up going to. So I, I returned the Galaxy Book 4 Edge mainly because I felt like, yes, it was a great device. 16 inches was, wasn't super heavy. It actually wasn't much heavier than like a 14-inch MacBook Pro. But to have something that you're talking about is, you know, $1,600 after taxes that basically was doing things that I could just do on my phone or on a tablet that cost less or similar in pricing but would outperform it and has actual software that I need and compatibility and is already more in tuned. I think mostly the problem is that the dev kits for the Snapdragon X Plus X Elite, their dev kits weren't made available ahead of time and I haven't even really seen them out available now. I don't know if you can get a hold of one and for their pricing for $8.99 plus taxes, you could just buy a Surface, like a Surface laptop, spend a couple hundred dollars more or a Lenovo Yoga 7, um, the 7X and pick up a full actual laptop and not have a dev kit now the dev kit yeah does have the highest powered x elite and 32 gigs of ram and plenty of storage but you know that because it's a final product they should be supported longer than maybe a dev kit would be you know the dev kit could be supported for 
until the next generation Snapdragon X Elite X Plus 2 or whatever they're going to call it, second generation, whatever they're going to call it next year. So for me, the problem is that, you know, ARM's been out for a while. Windows on ARM has been out for several years. Now, the hardware officially hasn't been out as far as like Snapdragon having it, but there's been other companies that have made um, attempts at ARM chips. And I've ran Windows 11 on ARM on a MacBook going as far back as the M1 MacBook Air with Parallels, and they officially supported it a couple years ago. And it runs smoother on there, or e equally as smooth on there as it did on the hardware that I tested it on. Now, like I said, if you're a student who's looking, maybe you need Windows and maybe you want, you know, decent battery life and runs fairly cool, the fans never got very loud, you got a fairly bright display, then I would say go ahead and check out one of the Snapdragon X Plus or X Elite computers. I would probably just go for the X Plus. It's got the same neuroprocessing and same graphics as the X Elite as far as my understanding of the testing I've seen, but it's just got two fewer cores. So instead of having, you know, a 12 core, you have a 10 core. And for most people, I don't think that they'll notice that difference. Like I said, the people who would notice would be probably people that would be doing video editing or comprehensive photo editing. And software needs to be updated to really fully support that yet. As far as when I tested it, uh, you know, updates may have been made in the last month or so. And as far as testing I've seen done by people, a lot of people are having some of the same kind of issues where it's like, okay, you can find software that works, but probably not the software you're using, or you're going to pay a monthly subscription, or it's using the x86 translation layer, so it's not going to get the full performance out of the CPU, GPU, neuroprocessing in the Snapdragon X Plus or X Elite chip. So that's kind of my follow-up. I did return that. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments down below. If you're new, please subscribe as it helps out the channel a lot. It doesn't cost you anything and you get more informative content, honest content like this. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace, love. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on your way out. Thanks for watching.